Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Teniola Shivoeli. We begin in Morocco where one person has been killed after the Navy opened fire on a motorboat carrying migrants in Moroccan waters. A 22-year-old Moroccan woman was killed and three others people injured. Authorities say the Spanish skipper of the migrant boat refused to stop, adding that his passengers were lying flat and could not be seen from the naval vessel. The International Organization for Migration says more than 38,000 migrants have reached Spain by land or sea this year, twice as many as last year. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, health workers involved in tackling the Ebola outbreak in the eastern city of Beni are resuming their outreach operations. This follows a two-day suspension because of an attack by rebels. The attack, suspected to have been carried out by the ADF, killed at least 18 people, including 14 civilians. The local authorities agreed to allow the health workers to restart following a warning by the World Health Organization. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization says that the Ebola outbreak could worsen rapidly. WHO's head of emergency response, Peter Salama, says there is extreme concern that several factors may be coming together over the next weeks and months to create a potential perfect storm. At least 100 people have died in the outbreak out of 150 cases in North Kivu and Ituri provinces. Over the we are now extremely concerned that several factors may be coming together over the next weeks to months to create a potential perfect storm. A perfect storm of active contact, conflict limiting our ability to access civilians, distrust by segments of the community already traumatized by decades of conflict and of murder, driven by a fear of a terrifying disease, but also exploited and manipulated by local politicians prior to an election. Today, we're only able to reach 20% of the contacts of confirmed and probable cases in and around Beni. So it means that 80% of people that are at risk of Ebola, at direct, immediate risk of Ebola, were unable to be followed up yesterday in Beni. We know this morning that this Ville Mort has been extended uh, until Friday. So that means this entire week uh, we may have uh, cases that, uh, that become more symptomatic and become more infectious that we're unable to respond to. Staying with the DRC, the outgoing President Joseph Kabila is pledging to hold peaceful, credible elections in the country at the end of the year. He made this statement while addressing the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly at the UN headquarters in New York. Mr. Kabila has ruled DR Congo since his father was killed in 2001. He agreed last month not to defy term limits by running for re-election, opening the door to the Central African nation's first democratic transfer of power. The president is backing Emmanuel Ramanzini Shadri in the long-delayed December 23rd poll. His biggest challenges are likely to be Felix Shizakedi and Vital Kimehi. Let's get more on this story now from Mr. John Oseji, an African affairs analyst. Thanks for joining us on the program. What do you make of President Kabila's vow at the UN General Assembly to hold peaceful and credible elections? I see his comments as um, a move in the right direction. Certainly, uh, um, the Democratic Republic of Congo needs to uh, an election as soon as possible. So I see his comments as uh, going in the right direction. We just that um, he will be able to um, fulfill his vow to make these elections peaceful and credible. Okay, so DR Congo has been witnessing rebel attacks in the northeastern part of the country, coupled with the Ebola outbreak, which has killed over 60 people. What effect is this likely to have on the elections? I don't see this, uh, the Ebola outbreak and um, the ongoing unrest in the east of the country as um, going to have a serious impact on the election. Um, reason being that uh, Congolese society has been um, rife with violence for a very, very long time. 
so um but then there could be a game changer um if um the UN vows to pressure from the government um to leave uh to begin um leaving then uh, probably and then if um peace remains in the other parts of the country then um, I think Abla will be able to claim um the glory of making Congo a much more peaceful uh, country and this would have an effect on the election result in the favor of um, Kabila and his um, group. Was, Kabila also called for the removal of UN forces from DR Congo due to poor results. How practical is this at this time? There has been a lot of, uh, there's been some level of criticism um, about the UN peacekeeping involvement in the DR Congo. However, the likelihood that um, you would leave would be dependent on the extent of peace in the democracy, in the eastern parts of the country. Um, the northeast has been rife with so much violence, and um, the and whether and then irrespective of the views of the government uh, and critics, the UN peacekeeping mission in the northeast has actually done um, a lot more good than harm. I don't see them living uh, in the short term, but then, I, but then um, depending on the level of security and the extent to which uh, Kabila's government can play the politics of um, uh, inclusion by uh, reaching a rapport with the um, rebel groups, so depending on the extent to which the government can reach out to these groups, then um, I see the UN peacekeeping force leaving, let's say, after the election.